think, I think some people have uh, painting in their blood or dancing in their blood, and even more than singing for me, writing is very much a part of me, and I, I can't not do it. I see you standing there in the back. I don't think I realized the pressure of following up Call Me Maybe until I went to a particular session where I sat down with one of the writers who'd done a lot of the Cyndi Lauper albums, who I'm a massive fan of. And I got in the room with him and he basically said to me, This is this is going to be like the biggest challenge in the world. How are we going to follow up that song? And it hit me that yeah, I guess I've kind of been living with that challenge since, since I saw kind of how much it, it got a life of its own. And um, it's a beautiful gift to have a song take off in that way. But um, <laughs> it was nice to hear him kind of verbalize what I think I was feeling um, and articulate it so well. It's like, yeah, this is going to be a massive uh, challenge. But I kind of thought about that for many months after, after that session and just changed my thinking on it. I, I'm not trying to make another comedy, maybe. It's, um, it was a wonderful adventure. Um, and I, I think it's changed my life for the better in so many ways. And it's introduced me to so many new, incredible people. But what I want to make now is, is something different than that. And, um, and letting go of that kind of was a very freeing thing. I think moving to New York was really freeing and meeting some friends outside the business and collaborating with artists just because I'm fans of their work, like the Tegan and Sarah and Dev Hines, and, um, and really kind of thinking outside the box about what this record could be, uh, an opportunity to show other sides of myself versus just a follow-up to uh, attempt Call Me Maybe uh, 2.0. Stay. No, I'm sorry, sorry. I run away. I run away with you. The writing process is a hard thing to describe because um, I've just tried so many different things. I think that's the one thing I'm proud of with this, though, is when I was looking at how to kind of go at making this next album, um, my answer was, "We'll try everything. Like try writing alone. Try writing with people." Um, try going after um, just artists that I'm inspired by and also if uh, my label had really great suggestions of people in the vein that I was aiming at to, to take that and, and to show up and to work my ass off and I did. It's just the pre, the, the verse and the pre were incredible. I like the person the pre but then I think if you're gonna have the pre be that thing then you have to like you have some, there's got to be something bigger to start the chorus. I Melodically? Think. Yeah. Guess what? If we make that the bridge, it's going to be the most killer bridge. I think ever. so, too. All right, so we've got a killer verse, pre, and, uh, and a bridge. We just need yeah. a bloody chorus. Yeah. Always need a chorus. Shit. Always need a chorus. But I'm still love you. I'm still Vocal producer is so key. You need someone who's the right amount of complimentary so you don't become not excited about it and confident about trying it again, but also somebody who's really able to pick it apart and to a challenge more, you. A little bit too. Your okay. Voice is the spot that we, here. Just about that timing's yeah. right? Okay. To the spot that the we met. Okay. I think when I'm really singing yeah. my best, I'm not listening to myself. I'm just sort of feeling the song. So I really I'm have to trust you. the people in the room that they know when the take is Can right and, and when it's wrong and talk, when it yeah. needs a little more power or a little less intensity and if it's getting pitchy or if the timing's off. It's just all those things. You kind of just have your, almost like your workout coach to kind of be like, hey, you can, you can go a little harder here. And it's like, all right, I trust you. You know my body. <laughs> Bad analogy. I like, I'm really into lyrics. I think they're more important than people give them credit for because they can just build such a story and create such a feeling when people can kind of sing along and get something. I, I think know. this makes so much sense. You've clearly broken up with the person. You're clearly, it's been a year since you've seen them and you see them at your favorite place that you go to and now you're driving away and you're fucking, it affected you more than you realize and then there's the, um, 
the epiphany okay, of like, I like why okay. did we end this? I still I remember feel so, all the words. Yeah, to that like fight. I still remember everything, and I or I don't or I don't. Do you remember? I well, can't remember the words. Like, so that fight is kind of cool. Is that sad? What? Like, yeah, it's sort of like, why did we... Because it is, it is. Like, once you break up with somebody, there's always that feeling of, like, all you can remember is the good things. And it's like... That. Yeah, and it's, it's like this weird mind trick. I, I can't remember, remember what we like, fought about, but I can but remember I still when... Remember when you... That, what, you I, told me that night, how you held me that... That's a little cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> what you did to me that night. But is it open my eyes with that melody seem a little Disney maybe? If you sing it like, ooh. Open my eyes. <laughs> oh, it sounds great. I work really well with people who can help with structure and stuff. That's always been nice for me because um, I've been nicknamed like a cookie jar in the back that I'll have 18 different ideas and it's nice for someone to be like, that's the idea, repeat that, run with it. And I'm learning more about it. It's, it's such an art form to kind of, um, to kind of hone in and like, like challenge yourself with. Every single song that I think has uh, made an impact in my career or has mattered um, has been a song that I have stepped away from and come back to and looked at with kind of clear eyes. Because when you're writing a song, it's almost like being drunk. You're just high off of it, feels great. You come back, you get a sober eye, you really can cut the fat and sort of analyze it differently. And I think that that is key. Uh, um, Matthias in, in Sweden said it's, it's about killing your darlings. I liked that phrase. And it's very hard to do because sometimes you write something and you felt it and you know why you put it in there and it feels so vital. And then later on you listen and you're like, but is it really doing anything for the song or is it just a cool part? Can we beat it? And challenging yourself and challenging that idea and that initial creative spark, I think, can bring it to a whole different level. I do function well when there is a really good friend connection. Um, and so that's what I've kind of worked to bring into even the one day things is to establish like a good vibe in the room. Because I think when you start with that, you can you can get intimate and you can be free to embarrass yourself real quick and know that you're still you're still heading in the right direction even if you say a stupid idea out loud. And I think as soon as the room becomes comfortable and you're not afraid to make a fool of yourself, that's when you can get into some really great creative spaces. He's like, he's like there to make sure that I, you know, stay in pitch and my time in his arm. And if not, he brings out that sword and he just like pokes me with it. Basically. It's like basically intimidation that they use at this studio, but it works. It's the secret to the hits. Yeah. Sing well or we'll kill you. Slowly.